Hey guys, welcome back to Love and Polish. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do this optical illusion nail art. This is actually based off of this little doodle that I used to do when I was back in high school, and I thought that it might look kind of cool on my nails, and I think it turned out pretty well. So let me know what you guys think, and I'll show you how I did it. So I'm actually doing this on my Twinkle Teen Glamour Mat. It's basically just a silicone mat, and you can use it for all sorts of nail art. I absolutely love it. If you don't have one of these, though, don't worry. If you're more talented than me, you can just freehand it directly on your nails, or you can use some sort of thick Ziploc bag or something kind of sturdy that is also plasticky and will allow nail polish to peel off of it. So to start, I'm taking this long striping brush from Twinkle Tea and I'm dipping it in a little bit of acrylic paint. In my experience, acrylic paint is just sort of easier to work with and it also scrapes off of silicone much more easily than regular nail polish does. I'm using the finger templates that are on this specific mat. Not all of them have this. If your mat does not have this, just sort of measure out your nail and figure out about what size you need to be making your decals. I'm going to start my brush at the mid side of my nail and bring it down to the mid base. So I'm basically just creating one long semi-thick line, sort of in the lower sticks of my nail. And I'm then going to mirror that same line towards the tip of my nail. So I've got this sort of half diamond shape going on. Once I have that down, I'm just going to go ahead and add a second line in, in between the line that I already drew towards the tip and the side of the nail on the mat. This may seem a little bit confusing, but once you get into it, it's just much less complicated than you think. And once I have that on the top, I'm just going to mirror it on the bottom. This design, everything is mirrored, so don't stress too much about that. Now with this whole middle section I have left over, I'm basically just going to be filling it with a bunch more lines, creating all of these small triangles. And all you have to try and keep in mind is just make sure that the triangles are at least similar in angle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, mine certainly wasn't, but you want them to be as close as possible to identical. They're sisters, not twins, so don't worry. And the great thing about acrylic, as always, is that you can scratch it off of pretty much any surface. So if you make any mistakes, or if your lines are too thick, you can just go ahead and rub that right off and start over if you need to, like I'm doing right here. And believe it or not, this is already like the first third of the design completely done. And the second part is just the first part repeated. <laughs> we're golden, we're doing fantastic. So with the same brush, I'm just going to draw a solid line right up the middle of my nail, cutting the whole design in half. Mine was a little bit over to the left instead of being half, but again, it's fine, no one's gonna notice. Now as you can see, the cool thing about this shape is that we have one line going between the base and the tip, and we've got the other line going from the side of the nail to the base, so we already have one of our triangles in place. So I'm just going to go ahead with my brush and create another line in between those two existing lines. And so as you can see, we're basically just recreating the same starburst pattern on the base of our nail, just like we did on the side of our nail. Okay, as you can see here, we now have this very crazy looking pattern with just diamonds all over the place. It's a little overwhelming and it's a little bit hard to see what's going on. So we are going to fill some of the spots in. I'm taking this flat and pointed brush from Twinkle Tea and again, some acrylic paint, and I'm pretty much going to fill in every other space. So the black parts will only be touching by the corners, never by the sides. And by the way, the reason that I'd recommend using this specific brush is because the tip of it is thin enough that you can really easily get in there and fill in these small diamonds in the middle, but the base of it is thick enough that you can very easily sort of spread it out and fill in large bases like you're going to see with the top and side diamonds. Absolutely wonderful, love this brush. I won't lie to you, this part does take kind of forever just to go through every single thing and make sure it's all looking good, but don't worry, it looks really cool in the end. Trust me, stick with me on this. At this point, it's pretty repetitive, so I'm just gonna tune that for a second and speed this up a little bit for you guys. Okay, at this point, once you have everything filled in, you can see that they are pretty uh, sparse, not super black, so I am going to go over them just one more time to make sure that they are completely blacked out. So this was sort of one of the first designs that I've been doing recently uh, in an attempt to get better at freehand nail art designs. I'm not very good at them. I've really always been an abstract nail artist, but freehand designers are so pretty. They make the coolest stuff. Freehand nail artists, you are so freaking talented. Uh, so this is me trying to get in there and I'm not even freehanding on my nails. I'm freehanding on a mat because I struggled that badly, but I really wanted this to look good. Once the design is all finished, just cover it up with a coat of top coat and then you're going to leave it alone. Don't touch it. <laughs> you want to leave it alone for several hours. I left mine overnight just to be sure, because if you don't leave it long enough, the nail polish will be too malleable and too wet and it might stretch out and get fingerprints in it and just, it will not transfer at all. But if you leave it for too long, then you run the risk of it becoming dry and brittle and breaking apart in your fingers. So I think generally you want to wait at least a couple of hours and at most 24 hours, but don't wait more than 24. So while we're waiting for that time to pass, we're going to slap red licorice onto our nails. This I think is an absolutely stunning color. It goes on my long nails in only one coat and it looks 
fabulous if I do say so myself. And here's the part that is very scary because if you do it wrong, you gotta redo the whole thing. Basically, you're just going to shimmy a pair of tweezers underneath the top coat and gently peel the whole thing up. Remember what I said about not doing it wrong? I did it wrong. <laughs> I missed a whole part of it. I was not careful enough peeling it up, so I did have to redo this whole thing off camera. So anyways, once you've redone your whole thing off camera because you messed up peeling it up, you're going to delicately place the decal over your nail. You're not putting it down yet, you're just sort of seeing where it's going to lie because once you do actually stick it down, you're really only gonna have one shot to get the positioning right. Once you have that all set, go ahead and apply a coat of top coat or any sort of clear nail polish to your nail and then place the decal on top of it and start slowly pressing it down. You can just use your finger. I find that I have some issues with fingerprints when that happens, so I'm actually using this rubber tip to an old nail oil pad of mine. Starting on one side of my nail, just sort of gently patting it down, massaging it, smoothing it, making sure that there's no wrinkles. Now the tricky part of using this method on my really curved nails is that putting a flat object on something round does not usually go well. It likes to wrinkle, it likes to have little like air pockets in there and we do not want those, so really just take your time with this. You cannot spend too long patting this thing down. You know, sit down, put a video in the background, put on one of my videos in the background, and just hang out, press it down very slowly, very methodically, add more top coat underneath if you need to, and make sure that it looks good. As you can see, it took me a really long time to get this properly pressed down with as few wrinkles and air bubbles as possible. But once I did, you get to do the really nice part of just cutting off all the excess bits around the edges. You don't have to do this, but it does make cleanup a little bit easier because then you're going to take a larger cleanup brush dipped in acetone and just start melting everything around the edges. Now, not only does this, of course, clean up your edges, but it also sort of bonds the nail polish into your nail. It kind of melts it around the edges into the base coat, so you end up with it being properly attached to your nail rather than just sitting on top of the nail polish on your nail, if that makes sense. Again, this is going to take quite a while. Acrylic paint does not really dissolve in acetone the way that nail polish does, so you might end up with these little flakes and sort of dirty bits all over your nails. That's okay. Once it's all dry, you can go ahead and wash your hands, and any of that excess stuff should come right off. But once you're feeling good about your cleanup, you can go ahead and apply your final coat of top coat and you get this gorgeous shimmer and take a look at the final design and be proud of yourself because this looks so cool. I think my favorite part of this design is how it looks like either one, you're really good at freehand or two, it looks like you had some sort of really unique stamping plate, but it's not. You did it yourself. It's just a decal and no one's ever gonna know except for all of you because I just told you. So don't tell anyone else. <laughs> But I really, really like how this turned out. It was just the way I thought it would be in my head. But I love how the colors go so well together and I had a really good time doing it. And I would love to hear your feedback as always. What did you think of this design? Do you think you're gonna do it yourself? Please let me know if you do, I would love to see it. And I think that's about all I have for you. I will see you guys later, bye.